Welcome fabricators. Today we are talking about beautiful soup. This isn't Campbell's or Chunky or Hungry Man, right? What we're talking about is a library, a Python library that's used for parsing and web scraping and automating the collection of data. That's what we're covering today on Tales from the Field. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. 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 We have a lot of tools in our toolbox when it comes to working with data and data science. And one of the key things that we have is Beautiful Soup. Now, Beautiful Soup is primarily used to be able to scrape websites. And part of the reason you would use it is it allows the automation of data collection and being able to turn XML or HTML data uh, into a more regular Unicode data type and structure that we could then save and use as relational data. Now, a quick note, um, web scraping can be against the terms of condition against some websites. So you should always read that website and understand uh, their terms and conditions before scraping its contents to make sure that that's something that you can do. One of the key things to understand is typically web scraping can be protected if it's for research, but if you look at profiting from it, that can kind of tip the line. So you always want to make sure that we're on the right side of this thing. But it is a tool that is widely used within our industry, especially when it comes to scraping social media comments, to be able to understand sentiment, uh, to be able to then rank pulling in the, our understanding of the way people actually feel about things. Did you know you could do this in Microsoft Fabric? Oh yeah, because that's what we're doing today, right? I'm not just gonna do beautiful soup. I'm gonna show you a step-by-step -step and, and tutorial that you could follow along with and you could do in Microsoft Fabric. So quick reminder, if this is your first time finding your way over to Tales from Phil. Give us a like and give us a subscribe. We drop content on Mondays, Tuesdays, or Wednesdays. On Mondays and Wednesdays, we have our MS Tech Bits. On Tuesdays, we have our Azure Data Community Roundtable, where we feature content from the Azure Data Community for the Azure Data Community. And we celebrate the creators in the community. Today is an MS Tech Bits. So let's not waste any more time and get over to that great demo. We're going to start out in our Fabric workspace. Specifically, I'm in a notebook connected to my lake house. And we're going to look at this tutorial, Web Scraping in Python with Beautiful Soup and Request, by Dr. Jan Kertz uh, from Stuttgart, Germany. Dr. Jan Kertz uh, has this very nice blog and he walks through how to be able to use web scraping specifically with VS Code and with Python. Now, I was curious, could we make this work with Microsoft Fabric? And turns out we can. So the first thing we're gonna do is we have to call our packages that we need for this. We need to call pandas, import request, and then we're gonna call the package BS4, which contains beautiful soup. We need a URL to scrape, and in this case, we're going to use a website Dr. Kirtz has put together, Quotes to Scrape, which has about 10 pages with inspiring quotes. And the first thing we're going to do is get the HTML. Now, once we get the HTML, one of the things that we can do is we can do a print statement and take a look at what we have. You'll notice that after this runs, I'm going to go to my next cell where we're going to use a command where we say, soup and this is our variable equals beautify html text a parser and then we're going to print soup.predify why do we have the dot predify well if we didn't we would get a dump of non-concatenated text that is the html of the website and as you can see right here what we've got is the html of the website so we've gone and we've scraped this information but what we need to do is figure out how do we parse this how do we go from what we have here to our relational code and that's what we've got to go through. We've got to look at this. If we look, we can see there's quote items, there's text, there's authors, there's some metadata. So the first thing we need to do is we need to understand how do we get this data. So if I want to get the title of the page, for example, I say soup.title because soup is my HTML and we get quotes to scrape. Not bad, but I want to get a little more specific. I, I would like to get this without the elements, but not Dot name doesn't get me there. Dot name gets me to the name of the HTML element. I need to do a title dot string because I'm looking for the string value. And then I get quotes to scrape. Now we can also begin to look at specific tags on a page. For example, the a link, the a href link that we would typically use to create links. I can get the very first link on a page. Now what I need to do is look at my code a little bit closer. 
one of the things that you'll notice is when we were looking through the HTML code, there's a lot of span items. And if I do a soup span.txt, I get a quote. So I can see that within the span text, we have multiple different items. You'll notice we have the opening and the ending of our span text, uh, but we also have, we have the opening and closing of our span text. And then we also have some information about authors and we have some metadata. We wanna get all of this. So you can see there's our span class text and there's my quote that exists within there. But I, I wanna get more specific because we wanna be able to separate this out. So next what we'll do is we'll create a new variable called quotes and we're going to populate it using soup find all. We have to use find all specifically to be able to scan the entire page. And as I do this, I pull back all the individual tags that have quotes with this. This gets me a little bit closer, but I'm still not quite there. But I can now see that I've got this down to the quotes, the authors, and even the metadata. So what we need to do is do a loop and get very specific. So we're not just looking for our class quotes in our div tags. Now we're looking for the class of the text so we can find it. And what we're going to do is in an iterative loop, we're going to say for I in quotes, find and print all of the span class text. And there we go. I have my quotes. Now, this is fantastic. I can look at this and go, I've got our data. I can now kind of extrapolate the same logic and use it to be able to get the authors of our quotes. And I can even say, give me the additional metadata that we have stored on the page to be able to get some of this. And notice right here, you can see some of the metadata, humor, obvious, similes, uh, because I've got my quote, a day without sunshine is like, you know, night. And it's by Steve Martin. Who doesn't love Steve Martin, right? And it's humorous. It's obvious. There's a simile associated with it. So great stuff. Now let's figure out We've got our metadata. The same logic is going to use, be used for this. How do we put this all together? This takes us to our final statement. The first thing we have to do is we have to create a set of arrays because the arrays will contain the logical grouping of these values. But then we do our for loop, but you'll notice that we're having the sub logic for the quotes, for the authors, for the metadata tags. And then after we do that, we're assembling a Python data frame, df equals PD data frame where we have our quotes, our authors, and our tags. When we run this, this is the end code. All I need is this block, this cell to be able to scrape the website, extract the data I want, and have it in a tabular format. And if we print our data frame, I can see it worked. We've got basically 90 rows. This is a zero based array for our first value, but we have 90 rows where we have our quotes, our authors, and the tags created associating with them. Now, what do I want to do? Well, because this is Microsoft Fabric, the first thing I need to do is I need to convert my pandas data frame to a Spark data frame. Very easy. I'm going to say author quotes equals spark.createDataFrame df. Once this happens, I can then write this to a table. So if I go ahead and I run this cell, what happens is behind the scenes, I'm writing this to my tables. We've done this before. I could use an append. I could use a write delta save, which creates the table and also populates this. I do a refresh and I can see there are my author quotes. As a matter of fact, from here, I can go over to SSMS. And when I open up SSMS and I expand my Baseball Lakehouse database, I can see that there's my author quotes table. And then I can do a simple select statement from that, being able to say select star from DBO author quotes. And what I'll do is I'll get all my data. So what have we done? Well, we've gone from step one, scrape the data. Step two, put it in a relational format. And then step three, consume this so that we can use this. Amazing stuff. It's a little bit of that fabric magic, right? Well, you know where we want to keep this going. Down in the comments, sound off. Is there anything you didn't understand? Any questions you have? Remember the link to Dr. Kierent's blog is in the description of the video. Make sure and go check that out. I'm going to add this notebook to my GitHub repository. That will also be in the description of the video. So you could go grab this, upload it to Fabric, play around with it. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Any other questions or anything you may have. Thank you so much for joining us on Tales from the Field. As always, be good to one another. Take care out there. Bye. One step at a time. Yeah, that's how you make it. Set a goal you control.